I would like to invite you today into a whole new world of sex and sexual energy. It is going to be a new beginning, new horizons, a whole new world to explore, a whole new continent that you haven't seen. So many more beautiful places to go, and that world is incredibly gorgeous. It is full of happy, profoundly nourishing energy that will enrich your whole life. This is not some kind of a technique that comes from me. This world is out there for all of us, and it always has been. It is like a dimension in nature where we can all go and be incredibly enriched by it. It is a gift from this universe. It is a part of nature out there for all of us. It is just that the explorers of our civilization were not allowed until recently to go out there and to chart it and to map it and to really see what is there. And we are only now beginning to venture out there. And it is our destiny for all of us as humanity, as civilization, to finally come out of this very basic and limited version of sex that we have been doing so far and to venture out into the new horizons to find that actual place that is out there for us, that is incredibly rich and beautiful, but it's also a very important place to go, a very impactful place, because it will be transformative for you to change the influx of that sexual energy and the quality of sexual energy in your life, because it will impact so much how you live your life, your quality of life, your relationships. It will generate love and connection and vitality and energy and aliveness in your life. It will affect your well-being and the course of your life so much. And I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, this is why I got into this work uh, 20 years ago when I was young. Uh, apart from other factors that came together, one of the things that really attracted me and fascinated me about sexuality at the time is that it is this world, this new world that we are beginning to explore that we haven't mapped and we haven't really been to. There is this exciting exploratory spirit because obviously we have uh, already covered all the geographical continents. There is nothing else to explore there, but we are just beginning to venture into certain worlds of our experience as humans, certain areas of our mind and uh, our existence and those are the new worlds where we are exploring and sexuality is definitely one of them it is so uncharted we have been locked away from it for so long and it is such a big world and such a rich world and we are just beginning now to map it and there is so much more to come we don't even know half of it and you know what it's all yours right now you can go there right now you don't need to get fit for it or get kitted out or anything. You can start exploring it right now and it can go on for the rest of your life. And it's going to be a fascinating journey with so much incredible, rich, nourishing, beautiful experience. And this journey needs to start with a request that I will ask of you. I will ask you to stop using the word pleasure. And I will ask you to start using the words sexual energy. And I'm completely respectful of, you know, what you want to believe and how you want to think about things. But I just think it is so important and so transformative for you to start using that language and to see sex in that way. And I will explain to you exactly why. And that will serve you to understand also that world that is out there. I'm aware that a lot of people are resistant to using the word energy because it has been used a lot of the time in sort of quasi-religious ways, you know, almost kind of trying to convert you into some system of beliefs about chakras and energy channels, etc. Not everybody is willing to take up those beliefs. But that is really not what I mean here. I'm not going to be talking about anything like that. So stay with me. Let me explain that to you. So this starts with the story of our language and sex. And I find this incredibly fascinating. Have you ever noticed that we don't actually have language for sex? It's a really incredible phenomenon. We have all had sex throughout history, obviously all of us, otherwise none of us would be here. Sex has always been on our minds and it has driven so much in history. The Trojan War was fought over a guy, you know, bedding the woman he shouldn't have bedded and whatever. It's all around us now obviously and uh, it's always on our minds it's a big part of our experience and yet throughout the whole history until a few decades ago we were not allowed to talk about it we were not allowed to learn about it to research it to develop it so this has led to this very curious place where we all have sex all the time but we do not have language for it we have not developed literally the vocabulary for it and i see this all the time in my clients they come 
we start talking about you know their experience what they feel now what they want to feel and they literally cannot verbalize it is as if i am speaking we are speaking japanese but they do not know japanese because sex is actually a really complex experience uh, you know there is a lot of uh, minutia and detail and nuance and a lot of different qualities to it. We actually need a fair amount of language to be able to explain it properly. But all we have for it is five words. Let me um, list those five words for you. Uh, pleasure, intimacy, orgasm, turn on, and sensation. That is it. Can you give me any more words that you know, apart from the organs, obviously? So even if we take music, uh, an artistic experience, a sensory experience that we often want to explain and to talk about, we have loads of vocabulary, loads of language to talk about it, very detailed language. Me, somebody who knows nothing about music, as a completely lay person, I know terms like, you know, uh, rhythm and pitch and tempo and BPM and tonality and melody and, you know, whatever, octave. And obviously a professional has so much more nuanced language to speak about how different kinds of music sound and, um, you know, to describe what kind of sound we want to create, etc. And yet, you know, music is just an artistic expression. You know, it's very beautiful, but we could argue it's something we can live without. And sex that is so central to our whole existence and has been in our minds all the time, we have five words. So there is this whole world where there is a river and it doesn't have a name. There is a mountain and it doesn't have a name. There is a beautiful valley and it doesn't have a name. We feel them, but we have no language for them. And we reduce it all to one word, pleasure. This word is like a horn on a car. It is one sound that is supposed to mean a million things. We use this one word, pleasure, that uh, is just meant to be for everything in sex. And this story of language of sex also parallels the actual development of our knowledge of sex. Our whole civilization moved forward and developed into this incredible technology and arts and, you know, psychology and we have developed as humans, but sex was left behind. And this is why I tell you there is uh, so much more you can experience right now, because what we're doing right now is just stuff from a very far away past. And we need to bring sex up uh, to the level of where we are right now in all other areas of our lives. So this is not just a curious linguistic discussion. Using this word pleasure has massive implications on your sex. It really reduces your sex. It reduces your experience to something very limited, very basic. Using this word pleasure reduces your understanding of sex, what you can do in sex, what you can feel in sex, what you ultimately create in sex. Because this word pleasure is not just a word. It defines how you see sex, what is the value of it for you, what you're supposed to be doing there. And the word pleasure is just a bad word to use sex. It misleads us. It masks from us. It hides from us the true experience, the true power of sex, and it leaves us with something a lot more reduced. So the word pleasure is actually quite a versatile word, and it means different things in different areas. But in sex, we give it a very specific meaning. That's just what we do. That's the convention. In sex, uh, pleasure means pleasant physical sensation that feels pleasant in the body. This is what you hear by the word pleasure. And by using this word pleasure, you understand that the point of sex is to get pleasant physical sensations. And what you're supposed to do in sex is to make pleasant physical sensations. And that is the sex we end up with. We do that. We touch a little bit in a different place, get a mildly different curious sensation. We rub a bit harder, a bit faster. We increase that sensation, that pleasant physical sensation by 20%. And somehow it all feels quite futile and a bit boring and um, it's very unclear what is the great value of making this pleasant physical sensations what is such a big deal and yet we are really interested in sex we are so attracted to it we are so drawn to it we know that there is something really big there but somehow these pleasant physical sensations they don't seem to deliver that because the word pleasure is just a really bad word to use it is not representative of sex it does not describe sex what you feel in sex is not pleasure. The word pleasure does not describe sex. The word pleasure does not describe your experience of sex. It does not describe what you actually feel in sex. There is something far greater happening in the moment of sex than a pleasant physical sensation. You feel something far richer than that, something far bigger. I want you to imagine now that we are getting a 3D animation of the moment of sex, of the 
uh, sensation and the feeling that we are receiving in that moment of sex. So that sexual sensation that you're feeling in that moment, it feels like real energy in your system. It vibrates like real energy in your system. Obviously, I don't mean by this some kind of objective energy, electricity flowing through the air between you. I mean by this, that sexual sensation in your system becomes real energy within your system. That sexual sensation in your system vibrates through you like joy, vibrates through you like happiness. It vibrates through you like beauty. And it has this very enriching quality that you are feeling for real in that moment. And in that moment of contact, there are more layers to it as well. You are not feeling just that sensation in your body. You're also feeling the flow of love between your bodies. As a real substance, you can feel it. You're feeling connection between you in that moment, that really magical substance that sparkles and crackles. Uh, and it's a real substance for you. You're feeling beauty flowing into your system, this very non-physical sense beyond uh, our physical five senses. Uh, but it's a real sense that we have. You're feeling that beauty nourishing your system. Uh, it's different kinds of beauty, uh, sensory beauty, aesthetic beauty, visual beauty, relational beauty, emotional beauty. All of this is flowing into you right now. You're also feeling in this moment this uh, closeness of your bodies, this real aliveness and energy of your bodies in that intimacy that is also uh, some kind of an energy that feels really interesting and really lovely and nourishing for you in that moment. So in that moment of sex, obviously I'm talking about good sex, yes you are feeling that physical sensation in your body that feels really happy, but you're also in the same place feeling the flow of love and connection and uh, different kinds of beauty and that aliveness and closeness of your bodies. So actually, all of those are substances. They are real substances, obviously not in the material world, but for your system, for your psyche. These are really powerful substances, really powerful nutrients for your psyche to absorb. And within you as a human being, they become real energy and that, at that moment. They feel really enriching for your psyche. So actually, the sexual sensation is so much more complex than just a physical sensation on your skin. It's actually a, a very complex composite feeling composed of uh, many different senses uh, that we have as human beings, really powerful senses. So there is that uh, physical sensation, but also love and connection and beauty. And all of these feelings, they're packaged into this one vibration that is vibrating into you. You are receiving this vibration and it feels so powerful, so gorgeous, so beautiful because it has such a rich composition of all the substances, all those nutrients that are feeding you right now. And that's why it feels so enriching and it feels so amazing for you and it feels so uh, powerful and so nourishing. This sexual sensation, when it goes into you, you feel it physically but also emotionally aesthetically, relationally, energetically, spiritually. This is how you're feeling the moment of sex. So the word pleasure doesn't describe it. The word pleasure doesn't describe what you're feeling. In fact, there is no word for what you're feeling because, like I said in the beginning, we don't have the vocabulary for it. This sexual feeling, this sexual sensation has no word. We have not invented it. It's a unique feeling. There is nothing else like it in our human experience. Uh, we can't call it anything else. And this is why I prefer to call it sexual vibration or a vibration of sexual energy. There might be a better word in the future, but at the moment there isn't. And uh, while there isn't, the closest we can come to is to explain what we're feeling here as sexual energy. And I really do not want you to understand this as some kind of a, a body energy, body electricity that you need to be channeling through your energy channels, through your chakras, through your meridians. Uh, you might have seen perspectives like this uh, in places that are called tantric or Taoist, but uh, this is an inaccurate representation of sexual energy. That is not really what sexual energy really is to us. This is a very sterile and clinical view of it, just as clinical as the anatomical uh, vision of sex. No, I want you to see sex as beautiful, nourishing energy that enriches your senses. You can understand this literally if you want, that it is a real energy that is flowing into you. You can understand this metaphorically if you want, that there is a lot happening under the hood, you know, all the physiology and psychology and all the emotional stuff, etc. But altogether, your experience of it all in this moment is that 
it is a beautiful, nourishing energy that enriches you. That is your experience. Sex is energy because right now in this moment you're feeling a real nourishing substance. It is real and it is enriching you. And afterwards you feel enriched. That is why sex is energy. Sex is obviously not a kind of energy that you know will make you run five miles. It's not a physical energy. It is sort of this psychedelic energy, this energy that really feeds our senses and our psyche and our emotions. In the same way as we could say that you know, music gives us energy or being in nature gives us energy. It's something similar to that. So you should actually think of it in the same way as how you listen to music. That's a very good analogy for uh, sexual energy. It's a very good way to understand sex. In fact, the closest experience we have to sex is listening to music because something very similar happens there. What is music physically? Nothing. It is airwaves traveling through the air, hitting your eardrums, just like any other sounds any other noise. But when that vibration goes into your system, inside you, in your senses, it unpacks, it transforms, it becomes something completely different. It becomes that energy in your system. It enriches you. It creates an emotional impact. It brings beauty. It brings feelings. Now, this is happening within you completely non-physically. Uh, physically, it is just an airwave. But you get so enriched by music. So sex is very similar in that way. Every sexual sensation is like a sound of that music that does have a physical component, but the main impact it makes, the main enrichment is on your feelings, on your senses. It's in that energy that it brings into you. So sex is energy because in this moment it feels tremendously rich and nourishing. It has that quality, but also because we feel really enriched by sex after sex, if you think about how you feel after you've had really amazing sex, you don't feel like you've just had some pleasant sensations, you know, experienced some pleasant physical sensations, and that was it. You feel really alive, you feel really buzzing, you feel so full of beauty, full of life, you feel so vibrant. Uh, your whole life is sparkly and beautiful, and you feel all those energies in you, you know, in your day. Because yes, because sex goes really deep and it really enriches you and you can feel that effect after sex. It is unmistakable. So something obviously happened. Some kind of enrichment and nourishment obviously happened because you can feel it in your experience. So really, sex is a field of beautiful, nourishing energy where we go to spend some time and to be enriched by it. It is like this dimension in our existence, this layer in our life. Uh, that is unique. It is unlike anything else. And we go into that dimension every now and again to spend time there in the same way as we would spend time in nature. And we just spend time there filling up with that beautiful, nourishing energy. That is what sex really is. And it is not one element, like a, in a periodic table, you know, sexual energy. Uh, it's a field of lots of different kinds of sexual energy, lots of different kinds of vibrations and beauty and their qualities and uh, how they are nutritious for you in different ways. Sometimes you experience sexual energy as this really powerful electric shock waves through your whole system. Sometimes you experience sexual energy as this really soothing, nurturing, nourishing, loving cloud that you float in. Sometimes you experience sexual energy as just blissful vibrations of beauty flowing uh, in different ways through you. Please understand that I'm very limited here in giving you examples and describing different experiences you can have in sexual energy because we don't have vocabulary for it, like I said before. We, we don't have the language to describe it. There are just so many different, beautiful, powerful, rich experiences you can have that we don't have any names for. It is like in music, we can make a million gorgeous but very different uh, pieces. Uh, in art, we can make a million different colors. So it is the same with sexual energy. And once you understand that you are actually making real energy in sex, then you can uh, learn more about how to cook different kinds of sexual energy, which will have different properties and different qualities for you, and they will feed you in different ways. And then you can cook uh, the kind of sexual energy that you need on any given day that will be the right thing for you. The experience of sexual energy in sex can be really electrifying or really spectacular and celebratory, or it can be really nurturing and soothing, or it can be really loving and connecting, or it can be really restorative and regenerative and bringing you back to life, or it can be really beautiful in a special uh, spiritual way. So it's a whole world 
of different kinds of energies that your system can absorb and be enriched by. So I just want you to realize that in sex you are creating real energy and you're leaving real energy behind. And therefore, generally, there is a third dimension here that your sex life on the whole, the sexual energy in your life, is an energy in your life. It really impacts your life. It really influences your life. It influences your life in major ways, which we as a culture refuse to notice, refuse to talk about. We would still rather talk about it as, you know, fun and pleasure. We refuse to see how much it impacts us as energy. And this happens in two ways. There's an impact on you as, a, as an individual, on your well-being, on how you feel about yourself. And there is an impact on your relationship, as if your relationship was a person or a unit that also benefits from this energy. So this has both positive and negative implications. For you as an individual, a sexual energy is a big part of your well-being, is a big part of your energies. It really influences you. When you're receiving really good quality, nourishing sexual energy in your life as an individual, it really affects your well-being. You feel great. You feel alive. You feel well. You feel powerful. It makes you feel emotionally well. You feel great in yourself. You're more able. You're more perhaps creative or inspired or motivated or productive. There are all sorts of nutritious effects that people experience from uh, their sexual energy. I see this in my clients all the time. When they bring good sexual energy into their life, it becomes about a lot more than sex. Their whole life gets transformed. Their whole life becomes better, uh, more beautiful, more alive. It is a bit like nutrition. If I ask you, you know, why is nutrition important to you? You will say, well, it's important for everything in my life. Because at the end of the day, if I feel well and if I have good energy in me from nutrition, then uh, it will affect everything that happens in my life. And likewise, when people are affected negatively in sex, they often get very deeply uh, affected. It can really affect their emotional well-being and their sense of self and how they connect with themselves, with others, with the world. It can really affect their life energy. It can bring uh, so much tension and turbulence and blockages. And then there is the relationship, which is probably your home, your base, uh, a very important place in your life. Uh, to be well. You know, it goes without saying that when a relationship is good, that gives you power for everything in life. And when the relationship is bad, it becomes really toxic and depleting for your whole life. So sex make a massive impact on relationships, again, both positively and negatively. If your sex life is really good and loving and nourishing and really enriching in all the right ways, then as a couple, you are generating love. You are generating that harmony and that connection with each other. You're bringing all the time that really positive nurturing energy into your relationship that has a real flourishing effect on your relationship. You're creating real powerful energy of love that flourishes in your relationship through sex. You're bringing lots of beautiful sexual energies into your lives that make your whole relationship more harmonious, more affectionate, more connected, and they make you feel grateful that uh, through each other, you can bring those energies into your individual lives as well. Needless to say, when sex is not in a good place, uh, that can bring toxicity and conflict and tensions and discord. It can bring a tremendous amount of negative energy into your relationship. And often people do break up on the basis of sex without even realizing it. They might think it's about something else, some other conflicts that appeared in the relationship, but, but it was that negative energy, those tensions, that toxicity that appeared from sex that eventually uh, flowed in, further into their relationship. And obviously our senses, they get nourished by the positive, but they also absorb and internalize the negative. So uh, when I talk about the negative state of sexual energy in your life or in your relationship, I'm not necessarily talking about you not having sex. In fact, not having sex can sometimes be totally fine for people. You know, you are not benefiting from sexual energy, but, you know, it can be totally fine. You're not going to die from it. And what's far more common than not having sex is having sex that is hollow or malnourishing, that feels like you, uh, you should be being nourished, but you're not, or sex that feels toxic. That actually brings negative energy somehow into your life or into your relationship. And this happens a lot more often than not having sex because our culture teaches us malnourishing, depleting, and often toxic kind of sex. So what you've got to realize here is that you know, this is far beyond just pleasure, just feeling a pleasant physical sensation. This has such a profound impact 
on you, on your well-being, on your relationship. It is absurd that we are still talking about this in terms of pleasant physical sensations. Nobody has ever divorced anybody after raising a family and having children because they didn't get enough of a pleasant physical sensation. That is not what it was about. So it is actually really important that you stop using the word pleasure and you start uh, thinking about sex as sexual energy and talking about sex as sexual energy. This will be a fundamental shift in your experience of sex that will transform your sex life and it will transform your life because it will make sex so big, so rich, that it will transform your life. And actually, this is something that we need to do culturally as well. We need to stop seeing sex as pleasure. We need to start seeing sex as sexual energy. This is essential for us culturally to heal, to develop, to evolve. If we realize in our culture that a sex is energy and we start talking about it like this, we will finally give it the respect that it deserves, the care that it deserves, the place in our lives that it actually deserves. We will start treating it seriously and we will evolve and we will benefit from it and we will counteract these uh, grotesque mutations uh, that our sex culture is experiencing at the moment in regressive and um, toxic directions. This whole fundamental problem is that we are still seeing sex as some kind of entertainment industry and we don't understand that it is such a powerful and influential energy. But that's a story for another day. Don't even start me on that. So in your life, if you stop using the word pleasure and if you start talking about everything in sex in terms of sexual energy, this will transform everything. This will open a much richer, much more nourishing, much more enriching experience of sex for you. This realization will be the shift that will move you beyond this limited and basic version of sex that we're all practicing. And it will open for you a whole new world of sex, a very rich world of sexual experiences and very rich sexual experiences. If you want a really great sex life, if you really want the greatest experience of sex, I think it is essential that you stop using the word pleasure. I think it is impossible uh, to really experience the true beauty, the true richness of sex if you keep talking about it as pleasure. And it does not matter if you believe in energy in quotation marks, you don't believe in energy in quotation marks. It is whatever you want. If you believe in energy, that's fine. You can feel it as a real energy flow in between your bodies. If you don't believe in energy, you can think of it as a simplification for all the complex processes that are happening under the hood, obviously, all the physiology and psychology and all the emotional stuff. All of that is combined into this experience that you're receiving, that uh, you feel as beautiful, nourishing energy that is enriching your senses. You can use these words as a metaphor, as an approximation, as a symbol. Uh, this is just your experience. So even if you're a hardcore materialist and you just hate the sound of the word energy, it makes you feel like you're in a dentist chair, that's totally fine. You can still use the words sexual energy without taking this too seriously. It is just imagery for you then. It is just an easy way to talk uh, in simple terms about a very complex experience. It just describes your feelings, your experience. But it will be just as important for you and just as productive for you. And it will transform your sex life. And you're still going to be very limited by relating to sex as pleasure instead. All words are symbols. There's no such thing as a word that is objective reality. The word pleasure is also a symbol for this experience that we're having in sex. But it is inaccurate. It is a useless word. It doesn't describe the experience we are actually having in sex. It doesn't describe what you actually feel in sex. And it doesn't describe what you actually want in sex, what you are looking for. This word pleasure is misleading us. It is manifesting in a much more basic and limited experience uh, that is way below what is our actual potential and what we are actually capable of. When you're using this word pleasure in sex, you automatically default to having sex to make pleasant physical sensations. It is unavoidable. It's very difficult not to end up there. So you're making those pleasant physical sensations. You rub here, you rub there. Oh, it's mildly curious that there is a, uh, a new sensation behind your ear. Uh, you try to rub harder and faster and you get 20% increase on your clitoral sensation and it will be pleasant enough, but it will not feel like the sex that you really want to feel. It will not feel like the sex that you are really looking for. It will feel a lot more limited. It will feel 
not very interesting and not very satisfying. Because why you are really drawn to sex is because you know deep down that it is this beautiful, nourishing, enriching energy for you. That whole new world of sex that is all yours and is full of such beautiful and powerful places that I was talking about at the beginning of this episode, that world opens to you when you start using the idea of sexual energy and thinking about sex this way. This is how you enter that world. It is not a trick. It is not a tool. It is the realization of reality that uh, this describes far more accurately your real experience of sex. This is what sex feels like to you as that beautiful energy, as that real nourishment and enrichment, as that aliveness and beauty that flows through you and that then stays with you in your life. You understand the purpose of sex now. You understand the value of sex. You understand the meaning of sex. You understand why it is in your life. You understand that I am here to be nourished. I am here to be enriched. I am here to be saturated with this beautiful energy. There is no more questioning, why am I here? What am I doing? I'm just trying to get turned on. I'm just trying to you know, get excited for a second. What is this for? What is this sensation for? You understand what this is in your life now. This is really powerful because uh, once you connect with a purpose for something, then everything gets aligned with it and you start creating uh, that vision in your life. You connect with it in your soul, in your heart, and you start looking after sex. You start giving it the place in your life that it deserves. It is that really enriching energy you want it. You start looking after it, you start nurturing it, you start learning about it, you start developing it, you start making time and space for it in your life with a partner. And most importantly, you start realizing that in sex you are creating energy and you are left with energy. So therefore, you start uh, taking care of the quality of that energy. What kind of energy are you going to get from sex? And then in the moment, that realization that sex is energy, it makes you experience that moment in sex completely differently. You start tuning into this quality of sex as being nourishing for you right now, being enriching for you right now. And you know what? You start feeling that a lot more than when you are not listening to that, a lot more than when you're just trying to get excited. It's, so it's almost like the pores of your senses open up to sexual energy in this moment and you start receiving it into your being. You become much more sensitive. You start discerning different energies in this moment, the energy of love, the energy of connection, all those uh, beautiful nourishing energies of the body, of the uh, sensation. You become a lot more sensitive. Your whole system develops to feel the subtleties and the detail of that nourishment, that enrichment. And then you're able to go into many more beautiful places in sex. And you will make richer energy in sex. Because at the end of the day, you can make anything you want. So what are you actually making in sex? If you are thinking that you're making pleasure, then you will make just pleasure and that will be that. But if you know that you are creating energy and that you want to create energy and that you want to feel energy and that you will be left with energy, then you will end up creating energy. You will create richer energy. You will create a hundred different kinds of energy and you will not even know how. You will just do it because you know that that is what you are doing in the moment of sex now. And we go beyond this primitive anatomical picture of sex that is still thrust upon us like we are some animals with a sensitive pressure spot here and a sensitive pressure spot there. So if we just keep buzzing on that button, we're going to get that pleasant physical sensation. So we see ourselves as this uh, meat of the body with an organ attached to it that we need to stimulate for a physical uh, pleasant sensation. When we realize that sex is energy, we understand suddenly that we enjoy sex, we benefit from sex as a full human being with the whole body. There is energy everywhere in the whole body. And not just in the body, but we uh, feel that energy from sex with our souls, with our hearts, with our senses, with our sense of love and beauty and connection. So you stop being so attached to this organ that is attached to you. And you start experiencing sex in many more different places of yourself many more different layers of yourself, the range of the energies that you receive from sex increases so much. Because as a person, you're not bound to the organ. You want to feel beautiful energy. And suddenly, there are a hundred different places and different ways you can feel beautiful energy in sex. 
This is so liberating. Another point, and uh, this is my personal point. You might disagree with me, uh, but maybe you will agree with me. Uh, I think that we need a, a nice and pleasant and aesthetic way of talking about sex because it is a really pretty experience and it's a really beautiful experience and we everything is so sexy and so beautiful and we love each other's bodies and it all feels really lovely and it, it's nice to talk about it in some kind of aesthetic pleasing terms and i don't know about you but i'm just put off by all this fashion of you know talking about engorging lips with blood and you engorging this with blood and you increasing blood flow here and blood flow there in real terms, when we are talking about sexual technique, we are still talking about meat all the time, culturally. And it makes us feel like meat. So it's just a nicer way to talk about sex. That, you know, everything in sex is energy. There are different colors, different qualities, uh, different sounds that you're creating with it. You're bringing energy into this place. You are transmitting energy from this place. You're sending each other this kind of energy. You are feeding your lover's body with nurturing sexual energy first, and then you're uh, involving more erotic uh, sexual energy on their body and then you are beginning to engage with the genital energy and that the genital energy intensifies and then you're keeping it on a particular level and then you might decide to um, release that sexual energy or to invert it in orgasmic waves into their body but in our culture we keep insisting on describing everything with you know stimulating particular nerves and nerve endings here and nerve endings there and blood flowing there and blood engorging this part uh, of your organ etc it's just not particularly attractive and in some way you know this is perceived as reality that is not reality that is not what i'm feeling uh, in the moment of sex i'm not feeling this what i'm feeling is something much bigger as we have already talked about everything in sex is energy we experience it as energy every touch is a vibration of that beautiful energy into us every movement is a cascade of those vibrations into your body Every genital sensation is this strong electric shooting of that uh, sexual energy through your body. Love is energy that you feel flowing between your bodies. Arousal is sexual energy expanding through your system uh, as you're having sex. A climax is a release of that sexual energy into your system. An ongoing orgasmic experience is waves of sexual energy flowing into your system. This is what you are experiencing. This is a real experience. And it just becomes a much easier way to see everything in sex, to understand everything that is happening in sex, to uh, talk to each other about different qualities of each moment and what you are feeling. It's actually a very versatile and a very simple way of talking about sex. And I can prove it very easily right now. I challenge you to go back to a minute ago when I was describing different things in sex and to reword them in physiological terms, what is actually happening there. Will you be able to achieve that? And this is a very interesting point because, uh, of course, an objection might be, well, you know, do we need to talk about energy, some kind of hippie word, some kind of new agey word? Can't we talk about, you know, what's really happening there scientifically, physiologically? Uh, that's a fair point, but... I'm not sure that most people appreciate just how much is happening there. You might have this very simple idea, something gets engorged or, you know, there's like hormones in your blood. This is probably one of the most complex experiences that uh, happens in the human body. If you consider everything that is happening there, there is all that physiology. There are changes in the body. Uh, there are hormones uh, in the blood and, you know, not one. There's a whole uh, cocktail and they're all interacting and, you know, concentration of one is in, uh, increasing or decreasing concentration of the other. They have, you know, curves and, you know, co, uh, uh, co-activity and things like this. And uh, the nervous system is firing at so many different levels. You know, there is the physical sensation and, you know, different areas of your nervous system reacting to this. And um, all your emotions, all your psychology gets plugged into that. Can you imagine the complexity of this experience that is happening on the physiological level? So there are three problems with describing it. First of all, you would have to write a page on every moment of sex to describe it. Secondly, we don't know half of it because our sex science is really poor. We still haven't uh, explained most of it. Thirdly, let's say you are able to describe it. How are you going to use it? Are you going to be able to use it as a technique in the moment of sex? What are you going to do? Are you going to read a lecture? So none of it is practical. And the easiest way to talk about sex, the most accurate and the most simple framework 
is to talk about everything that happens in sex as some kind of energy that you're experiencing. And then you can be talking about different kinds of different intensities, different colors, and different effects from it. Of course, you are creating different kinds of energies and you're feeling different kinds of energies. And then you become an artist. You become intuitive. You become um, a musician, a painter with those energies. You create different qualities and different colors and different intensities and different uh, experiences from all this sexual energy. So seeing sex as energy is simply more accurate, more meaningful to you. It is more effective. It is more practical. It is easier for the complexity that sex is. And it's more pleasing and more aesthetic. And then this becomes a tool with which a whole new life in sex is created. But the image that I finally want to leave you with is very simple. There is a world out there, a dimension in your life. You can go there anytime you want. It's like a garden at the back of your house. And uh, that world is like nature. You just go there to spend time there. And it is full of beautiful, nourishing energy. And you just spend time there saturating with that beautiful energy, filling up with it. And it really enriches you. And you know what? You can go there anytime you want. You don't need to be good at it. You don't need to perform at it. It is there for you. It is a gift from life. It is a gift from this universe. It is there to nourish you, just as you are. It is an energy in your life that is there to nourish you. And I can't wait to tell you more about this world. So please follow the content, follow this podcast, follow my other content, go to my website, lovefloweducation.com, where you will see the rest of my content. Uh, download my free courses, uh, subscribe to my mail list to receive my best content regularly. So that is all on my website, and uh, I have written out all the links for you below in the description. And I really can't wait to take you further on this journey and to uh, help you to discover that whole beautiful world. Until next time.